previous lecture we studied about cost of the good quality that involved prevention cost and the appraisal cost. Prevention cost was basically used for the prevention of the different hazards or prevention of the defects and appraisal cost was generally used for the quality checkup and maintaining the quality management system. Now let us see what is cost of bad quality. Cost of bad quality involves the failure cost. The cost of bad quality includes internal failure cost and external failure cost. So what are internal and external failure costs? Let us look about the internal and external failure costs in detail in this lecture. Internal failure costs are those costs that are discovered before the products reach the customers. So these costs may be discovered at the time of production or during providing any services or even after the product is made but still inside the warehouse of the factory. So they can be returned to the factory for rework or rechecking the quality of the product once again. They are usually the reworks, waste and the cost associated with the analysis of the failures. Now let us see different types of the internal failure costs. As we already said, the internal failure cost involves the cost of waste. Generally costs are involved in the performance of the unnecessary work or holding of the stock at the re as a result of the errors or poor organization or communication. So holding of the stock also involves the cost. This cost may be holding of the time and holding of the space required to hold those raw materials. So naturally it will take costs and these fall under the internal failure costs. The next type of internal failure costs are the scraps. Scraps are just the defective products or materials that cannot be repaired, used or sold. Note that there is difference between waste and scrap. Waste kind of internal failure costs involves those materials which may be used for the rework or these may involve the products that we are not sure whether we can use them further or not. So this falls in the waste category and those defective products that can be used in the rework are called the scraps. The third type of internal failure cost is the cost incurred in rework or rectification. If we have to maintain certain parts or services of the products which we already made and then we discovered that there is some quality problems in the material, then cost is involved in its maintenance. So this falls in the category of the internal failure cost. And the fourth type of internal failure cost is the cost involved in the failure analysis, which are just the activities required to establish the causes of the internal product or service failure. Now there is the second type of cost of bad quality which are called the external failure cost. External failure costs are those costs that are discovered once the products reach the hands of the customers. You should memorize a very important thing that gets repeated in the competitive exams as well and at the end of this course I will also take the practice exam so that it will be helpful to you to check your knowledge on this course. The external failure costs are very heavy cost. Now what does that mean? It simply means that we cannot just be ready to expect for any types of external failure costs. These are very heavy costs and if you got any external failure costs, chances may be your whole products and service line may close, your reputation in the market may vanish and your organization may go totally in doom. So you have to prevent any external failure costs. So the primary objective of all the other costs that is prevention costs, appraisal cost and the internal failure cost is to prevent external failure cost because this causes the heavy reputation loss of the company. Now let us see what are the types of external failure costs. The first type of external failure costs are the repair and servicing in which the customer returns back the products and you have to either repair or service. Generally you give warranty for those products and if anything related to quality is reported then the products are returned then you have to repair and service them and but in doing so it may affect the reputation of your products or services. Second types of cost is the warranty and claims. Warranty and claims cost involves failed products that are replaced or services that are re-performed under a guarantee. The third type of external failure costs is the complaint in which all works and costs associated with handling and customers complaints are involved. Generally for different products and services, you have to form the product complaint handling department. You have to maintain the customer services. So these also involves the cost and these fall under the external filler cost. 
now one thing to remember is that though i said that external failure costs are one of the heavy costs the customer care or complaint handling department will ultimately improve the quality of your products and services so i strongly recommend in any organization that they should have at least a single customer care center and the fourth type of external failure cost is the returns. Returns are those costs which are involved in the handling and investigation of the rejected or recalled products, including the transport costs. Whenever the customers want to return the product as claimed in the warranty, sometimes you have to bear all the cost of the transport and investigation of the rejected and recalled products. So in this lecture, we particularly studied about the two different types of costs of bad quality, internal failure cost and external failure cost. And we learned that external failure costs are the heavy costs which affect the reputation of the organization as a whole. And the whole goal of the cost of good quality and the internal failure cost is to prevent any external failure costs.